Hey everyone, how you doing out there? You're about to hear a chat I had with Ms. Jasmine Masters from a few weeks ago. And before we get into the show, I just want to mention a few things about patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. That's the place where you can go and join Hot Dog Club. And Hot Dog Club is bringing you this show commercial free. So if you want to be part of the fun, the mayhem, and all the stuff and the things, head on over to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends. Check out the reward tiers available and uh, find the one that's best for you. You get bonus episodes, listener questions episodes, movie club episodes, there's Zoom meetings, all kinds of stuff and things. So, with all that said, it's time for the show. Attention fellow junkie whores, it is time to get our jush with the return to whimsically volatile of the consummate performer who gives it her all on stage, online, and in her heart. That's right, she's got something to say and it is her time to shine all the time. Without further ado, I am pleased to present none other than our Lord and personal Savior, Miss Jasmine Masters. Welcome, Jasmine. How are you, love? Oh, I'm good. Good, thanks. It's lovely to chat with you again. Likewise, likewise. I think the last time I saw you was um, at Precinct sometime at the end of last year. I don't know. The, the last like half of last year is all blurry to me anyway. Yeah, same year. <laughs> 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 How's your time in quarantine been? I like calling it quarantine because I feel like it gives it a little bit of a zip. You know, I've been okay. Um, I have so much going on with the drag situation, meaning putting stuff in order, retouching up costumes and stuff. So that's been keeping me a, a busy a lot. And I go live a lot on my platform to talk to people. So that helped me a lot too as well. So I've been pretty good during it so, so, so far. Yeah, well, I also have to say that, you know, your lives and all of your online interactions with people are a real source of light and uh, comfort in this time because you, you always have been okay. like that. You're welcome. You always have been like that, but I've been watching uh, your lives and uh, and then the archives on IGTV and mm -hmm. they're, they're really, they're just really great because they help to recenter you and also, you know, no matter what mood you might be in because, you know, we're all going through these crazy moods uh, during this time. I, I find that it's just like the, the wheel of moods is, is so unpredictable and it's just like you never know. You could be in a good mood and then an hour later you're in like the craziest mood ever. Yeah, it's a roller coaster of emotions, you know. We don't know. We could just finally come to understanding what's going on before something just that quick pop up and it's a whole nother situation. Our mental refractory period now it's like there's just no time you know what i mean it's like what's what's that huh yeah. what <laughs> no, we need a little bit of time i think the day where the protesting really started intensely i my sleep schedule gets fucked up all the time right so like i weirdly it's like sort of slept uh before things really uh, happened and i woke up and it was a really a weird mix of emotions because also waking up at midnight is weird anyway no matter how many times i've done it but i i felt this like incredible uh feeling of like hope because there's been so much despair but then there's i got this sense that like oh my god something something's really changing i, I or, or you know i'm maybe on the way to change and I, i'd love to know what you uh, feel about that you know after everything that was going on with all the killings leading up to uh george's killing i knew it was something was boiling you yeah. know it yeah was already so much going on with what's going on in the white house them trying to strip gays from their rights and them doing this and this. I knew it was going to boil to some point to where it was going to explode. Yeah. And it exploded. And on top of that exploding, we also have something that is out there killing us as well. Right. You know, yeah. something that they really don't know what they're doing with it. They don't know a cure for it. So, you know, we have that on top of all of this. Right. So between people being stuck in the house, because of this virus, and then we having all of these killings. Yeah, uh, people had enough of it. So I, you know, I I understand the protests and I understand the rioting because they don't understand until we start tearing shit up. You know, right? And that's when I say us or we, I mean, in, you know, everybody tears shit up. Yeah, you know, because everybody at this point is just pretty sick of it. Everybody just want an equal life and just to live life, you know, the best way that we can. And I, I don't think anyone is just here for any bullshit anymore. It does feel that way, yeah. Or this, you know, it'd be a, a better change for us all. Absolutely. And to see that there's been protests in every one of the 50 states, which I don't think has ever happened before, is kind of a staggering thing. And, and I find a hope and comfort in that. Uh, again, like you said, with the White House 
doing everything they can, not just to ignore, but to actively uh, persecute and impair the lives of so many communities. And then with the, like you said, COVID and the cops, you know, I mean, faith in institutions is probably at an all time low. Yeah, it is. It really is. You know, and it's it's sad because you can see that more and more officers who are supposed to be there to protect and kind of keep peace, they are the ones who are keeping the most ruckus and bullshit up. Yeah. You know, yeah. You can't call and say, I'm having a problem because you're gonna be the problem because they're gonna look at you as the problem and not what the situation is, you know? And that's just because that's their beliefs at home. Right. And they don't know take their beliefs at home and keep it at home and not bring it to the job. And that's where we got to cut the ties at, up in that area. Yeah, and that's why the defunding of police, it doesn't even seem like a radical idea at all, you know? And, you know, I feel like this. You know, they say, oh, we have the good cop and the bad cop. Okay, well, y'all definitely have some bad cops. And just because you may be the one doing the crime, but you're watching and you're not saying anything, uh, you're just as well as, as guilty. But then you also have to look at it on the person side who's watching it. If they go say anything, then they got a whole force of people on them because they inside seeing what's going on. But as soon as they bring it up, then they think, you know, they're fired. They getting a job. You know, it ain't no telling what could happen to them. So it's like, damn if I do, damn if I don't. Right. But at that point, somebody had to say, okay, enough is enough. Somebody up in the higher ranks. But if people in the higher ranks don't give a shit, then it's going to always be what it's going to be. It's kind of like a cult, really, in that uh, yeah. no one can step out of line because they they will then be persecuted um, for defying that. There's a classic story of Frank Serpico, the whistleblower, who uh, they tried to kill. Mm-hmm. He, at first, was just trying to not participate in the corruption. You know, he, he basically was like, well, I, okay, you do your thing. I, I don't, I'm not comfortable taking money, whatever. But he, because he just he wouldn't take it, they tried to kill him. When you mentioned that you you know you'd like to be able to think that if there's something going wrong that you could call someone and and say but we need help. What's your experience been with police just in general over the years? Well, you know, I could say I haven't had a lot of problems with them growing up. I would say since I have been in this area, like in the Culver City area. Yeah. Uh, when I first was here, like 13, 14 years ago, I would walk down the street. And every blue moon, I would get pulled over and they would say, what you doing in this area? Or um, sometimes they even said, why I wasn't in school. But I'm like, well, you know, I live right down the street, you right. know, so that's why I'm in the area. I definitely ain't home. You know? <laughs> 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 but, you know, I have got stuff like that. But to say, like, if I've been just other than just out and I got harassed, uh, no, uh, the most harassment I got was either being in the area that I'm in, and they ask me what I'm doing here. And of course, they run your name. They run everything about you. Yeah. Um, and ask you a couple of questions, make you stand there for 30 minutes or however long they want to take a break. And then they say, okay, you're good to go. When they find out that you're... Luckily, everything is uh, clean and nothing. But right. I've been cleaning everything. But it's, it's always frightening because as a Black man, you know, I know what happened. Because sure. I see it, I heard it, I have family members who went through it. So we're always kind of taught about acting this way, answer this way, be like this towards them. You want to be a, you want to get back home. Yeah. So if you like you kiss an ass and you got to be a punk or whatever or soften up, then you do whatever you need to do to make sure you get home. Right. It's, it's sad that we have to live like that, but, you know, we grow up like we grow up getting told this stuff already. Right, because that's the way it's been for forever and a day. Yeah, so since we can remember. Right. You were talking about an interracial couple, a married couple, on your IG Live that recently uh, split or do- are divorcing because mm-hmm. the white partner wasn't comfortable with saying Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you were saying also that at the end of the day, you're still black and that some people are never going to... Um, I can't remember how you phrased it, but if you'd like to uh, talk about that, I thought it was a really impactful point. Yeah, um, well, it's, I don't really know them personally, but you know, on social media, you follow people, they follow you or whatnot. But a guy had left a, a message up there and he was saying that him and his boyfriend or husband of so many years had 
called it quits yeah. because his husband can't understand why black lives matter. Well, honey, you're married to a black guy. And sure enough, you may not see the things that I will go through on my own, or I may not have been through them things while I'm with you. But when I'm not with you, this is what I will go through. You know, you're not saving me because you're white and it's like, oh, we're fine. And I'm sure. black. So you ask, it doesn't work like that. So they was having, you know, a discussion, whatever. So they decided to call it, you know, over. Yeah. But then you have the couples where it get really heated when things happen. And then the lover call you a nigger. Gotcha. Then you're like, well, how do I take that? And we're married and you call me a nigger right. or a nigger whatever, and you're you're rallying for what we're trying to fight against. You right, know? right. Not just our rights, but the rights of me being your partner and I'm of the color, you know, the race that that's having this big problem, but you have no support for it. So, you know, they break up over that. And then, you know, it's like a, I guess, well, they call it whitewash when um, a black guy or a black person I guess talk proper or talk Beverly Hills or whatever they call white talking or whatever. Sure. They call, you know, that's a term for whitewash. A lot of them people that are considered a whitewash person, they don't really have identities, uh, clearance of themselves because they see themselves as another. They fit in with that. So Whatever fit, whatever they feel like they fit in with of any race other than their own, mm-hmm. it's always a slap in the face when they still get recognized and they still get told, even though you hang around us, but you're still one of them. Sure. You know? yeah. Then they be like, oh my God. Then they say they feel in But baby, you always got to know who you are from the get go. No mm-hmm. matter who you with, no matter who you hang with, no matter how many dicks you take, or none of that. You always going to be the person that you are, the race that you are, regardless. You're never going to be able to change that. What do you think is behind that? Is it uh, one of those things where it's just because of where who people are hanging out with? Or do you think that it's motivated by something that is, if not a side effect, then uh, a main effect of the systemic racism in that people maybe not wanting to uh, own their cultural identity or perhaps yeah. sort of adopt someone else's? You know, I, I it, it has a lot to do with um, how they was raised. You know, the people wasn't raised into like a city environment where they dealt with city stuff. So a lot of people grew up where they was in a private situation. So this is what their, what this is their upbringing. And you can't knock a person for their upbringing, but you can always you will won't, no matter how a person is raised, whether you raise with millions or raised with a dollar, you always know who you are as your culture. Sure. You know, sure. You always know that you are this race. This is what you stand for. This is who you are. This is who you was born to be. You can like any other race as it is. I mean, as you want. But the point of it is you're always going to be the race that you are. So right. you need to embrace that. And getting, you know, a lot of people who may have been brought up in a different area, this is on the there's a lot of people who grew up on, you know, let's say the not so fortunate side. Sure. But they have this mentality or this mindset that they're bougie or they, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. But and that could have been from uh, upbringing. or this could have been a self-born situation in themselves. Sure. But I, people really, at least our culture, people who have that identity crisis, I don't want to really say, but they need to always know no matter what. You do, no matter who you hang out with, no matter who you know, you're always going to be considered a black person when the first thing someone look at you in the face. Now, you know, they can see you from the back, they can see your leg, they can see your arm, they can see a piece of your skin, and they're going to identify you as black. People need to always remember that. That's who they are. And I sort of get the sense from what you're saying that um, when it's crunch time or when push comes to shove or, or something like that, or when a very stressful thing happens, uh, someone might be taken by surprise by that but and they have been uh-huh. yeah <laughs> a lot of people have been a lot of people have been saying i can't believe this just happened to me i've been living in this area such and such years i've been living in this house i bought this house i did this for the community i did this and this and for the cops to turn around and turn on me or to do whatever but baby you could have you could have been wiping asses up and down the boulevard <laughs> yeah but when times get hot baby, you're still a black man 
you know, and hell, even a black woman. Yeah. And hell, even that, you know, a Latino, they go through just as much as we go through. Mm-hmm. So it's all a piece of all the shit. While it's good that it's all that everything's being talked about now, I imagine it also awakens lifelong traumas. Mm-hmm. What do you think uh, about that in terms of the, the the mental health state of everyone, uh, particularly when it's on a layer cake with the isolation that's going on? Well, I think where people are mental state is at right now is they they just sick of they just sick of it. You know, it's like people are just fed up. You can only take so much before you start lashing out, before you start screaming, before you do anything. And right now, the world is just tired. Yeah. yeah. And that's because, like you said, it's all 50 states. Somebody, People are protesting not even in the damn United States. And that, that right there should let anybody know that, okay, everybody understand it is time for a change. Yeah. It's time for, you know, accusing people of doing something that they're not doing. It, everybody's just tired. Yeah, right. You know, and we're focusing on a black person doing this sort of thing. Baby, it's, everybody do the same exact crime in every race. Nobody is different. We all bleed. We all pee. Everyone have the same situation growing in their family somewhere. Right. So, all right, we're not human. It's like, well, what is the skin color? That's it. I mean, it's hard to say things are shocking when the police have been this bad for so long. But the fact that even though they've been videotaped doing these things, things or attacking protesters who are just standing there or you know pick something because you know there's one in a million things you can pick but then the the audacity they have to uh keep doing it brazenly because they've been emboldened by this administration that is kind of giving them the wink wink nudge nudge all the time that it's like it's okay right yeah and until someone take care of what's whoever's in the, the main seat yeah uh start locking down on it it's never going to change you know, so we have to start making sure that we go and we vote for like our politicians, our police chiefs and everybody, because that's we decide who we want up there. Also, when you were mentioning, I think on the same IG TV video, uh, something that I feel passionate about as well. You were saying we got to vote blue. We, we all have to vote and not just, you know, in one election, but every election. We all have to vote because uh, voting does matter. And I, I, I get crazy sometimes when you hear people say things like, well, I'm, our vote doesn't count, or it's these conspiracy theories that things are all rigged. Like, I don't believe that. And I don't think it's, um, um, in, a, in an energetic way, it's a good thing for us to think that way. I think we always have to know that, there, that we can affect a change, no matter if it's just one person, two people, 10 people. Yeah. And I hope after this past election we had, um, people realize they both really do count. Right. Every chance I get, no matter if I'm live, going live and we're talking and we just laughing or whatever the case may be, I always try to slide in there to tell everybody to vote. It's very important to vote. Spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down, right? And uh, I also... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to also um, be vigilant about making time for joy and making sure that we don't just slide into despair. Right, yeah. And you do um, you do a lot to help people do that, by the way. I want to say that again. Oh, yeah, thank you. You know, because I wake up, I've always been a very cheerful, very happy type of person. Right. And I just feel like if I can make people see that, like, being happy is the best way to be because you're always in a good mood. I try to put that in people as much as possible because they always say, why are you so happy? Because I'm like, it feels great to be happy. <laughs> it's the better <laughs> option, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to go through shit regardless. But right. if you're just happy, you're happy. And I don't want to ever feel like I'm down or take my health for granted because we have problems when we, you know, catch a cold, when we catch the flu or whatever we do. You know, that's when we're down. But the times we're supposed to be feeling good and be happy, that's when you be happy. I don't take it for granted that every time I wake up, I feel good and I'm happy. I uh, was really thankful this morning to wake up and feel good because yesterday I did not feel good. And I'm sure you've had days like this too during the, the corona crisis that, yeah. like we talked about, the moods go. And yesterday was one of those, it was like, it was almost like, what is it, that drug-resistant chlamydia or something like that? Like, no matter what I did, I, I had some CBD. Nope, that didn't work. I had a little mushrooms. That did not work at all. Actually, it went the wrong direction. You know, like some uh, some candy. Nope, not really. I just ate the entire candy bar. 
Uh, but, but but this morning I just like woke up and you know I, it was okay. It, I felt like oh okay, and I was just so relieved. <laughs> I paused for a second there because I just like to think about um, how important it is to remind people too to um, indulge in like movies or whatever it is that makes you feel good because I think there's also this sense of um, that a duty that a lot uh, most of us have all of us I think anyone listening to this uh, to be uh, apprised of what is going on every single day but we have to unplug sometimes too yeah I have to and I try to unplug that shit as much as possible because like we said earlier before we can get our minds wrapped around what just happened. Yeah. There's something else already going through. Right. Exactly. You know, I just zone out and I do whatever. And then when I go check everything, pretty much everything that already happened, happened and everything is going like this. So it's all one big, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. What do you do when you do unplug? I know you're a tr tremendous music fan, as am I. So uh, yeah. is that your sanctuary? Uh, I do play a lot of music, and I do watch a lot of documentaries, mm -hmm. either actress, actors, singers, musicians. I just watch a lot of different documentaries, and that keeps me like, okay, well, they went through, you know, they yeah. went through a lot of stuff, you yeah. know, like, whoa, and it just makes me thankful that I'm not going through that, but someone did go through that, that I'm going through, and they didn't give up, so I'm not going to give up either, right. because it's just a part of time, it's a part of life. Um, but it's always, that always keeps me very relaxed and calm because I see a lot of things that they went through, they got, they got through it. Right. And, you know, it's just like a reassurance that things happen, dramatic things are going to happen, Yeah. but just keep, you know, just stay there and keep going through it. And then before you know, it, it's all over with, you know, yeah, that's right. And I, I find a helpful thing too, is to, to think back on really uh, difficult times in my life, and and they don't necessarily, obviously, have the same severity as now, you know. But um, any any like a bad breakup or something that a really depressive episode, and uh, the the lesson I, I can take from that for me anyway is that that ended, that passed, and at times during those eras, it can feel like they'll never go away. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's why they say. Stuff like that makes you stronger. Right. Because when you go through all that type of heartache and you've been down and you just, before, you, when you make it out of it and you look back, you be like, oh, I got over that. And look at me now, I feel fine. Yes. So if it happens again, you're going to go through a little heartache. But remember, you went through it before and you made it out just fine. Yeah. And you have a, a sort of a toolkit now. You go, okay, uh, I'm feeling this kind of way, or I had this breakup and whatever. All right, so it's going to be, let's see, like uh, it'll be three months, and I might like uh, get a little too stoned for a while. Okay, and then what else? I'll probably eat this and that and for too much, and then... <laughs> yeah, so you're like, well, I went through this before, yeah. and this happened, that. this happened when I went through this way. So you already been through that experience, so you can handle it a little bit more better than you could, you know, maybe the first time or maybe the second time you've been through it. Right, exactly. Now... What's your go-to comfort meal during this time? Because uh, I always love talking with you about food because um, I saw on your IG Live that you were uh, get, going to town on some peanut M&Ms, which I'm also quite fond of. You know, um, I really don't have a go-to meal. I just go to whatever I have. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you, just, yeah, you like snacks, right? You're a big snack person. I like, yeah, I'm a snack person. But I'm um, like for like dinner and, and, and lunch and stuff, it ain't no telling what I would do. Cause I've been like staying like with a friend of mine. Uh -huh. Um, like during this time, like I come home and then I'd be over there because we just feel like it'd be like just come here, you know, we're not. Um Well that's good though. That's nice that you have that, that you have a uh, you can be with uh, around someone because the uh, isolation yeah. can be, you know, it really bad for anyone's mental state. Oh yeah, it's it's it can be definitely bad. But me being a person of like a homebody who I don't mind sitting in the house, watching TV, doing things around the house and just chilling. Yeah. It's, it, I knew it wasn't be a, it wouldn't be a problem for me. Sure. But a friend of mine who I've been like knowing for years, uh, we was actually in Vegas when they shut down. Oh, okay. And we're going to shut everything down. And I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, he was just like, you know what? You might as well just grab your stuff or whatever you need and just come to the house because there's no need for us to be, quarantine in different places and not just be together. 
Right. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But you know, it worked out and it'd be good. So is this a special friend, by the way? Yes. <laughs> ah, fabulous. Listen, I'm very, I, I, I couldn't be happier for, for you for that because I, I'm subsisting on a sexual diet of telesex and uh, I do I do miss the human touch. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, he, 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 like, he's been like my, my special guy for many, many years. We just never really made it into a relationship because we kind of like how things are now. Sure. Um, but you know, it was like, honey, if I got to be with anybody, I might as well be with you. Like, you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's all, That's all like, the real commitment in quotes that we need, right? I mean, that's that's great. Yeah. So that's been really good. And shit, we've been eating up everything. We go grocery shop. <laughs> we cook up everything. I, I need to be a little bit better about cooking. I mean, I've been cooking some things. The trouble is then I got into a rut of making the same things. And then I was oh. like, I'm getting sick to death of all of this. So I have to expand my universe a little bit. I have a, an instant pot, but I haven't really made good use of it. What's What have you been making lately? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything. Yeah. I do mean it because um, it just, it gave, it's, it's, give, it's given me more of a time to just be able to cook a lot of things that I haven't been able to cook for myself or I just been saying, no, I'm not going to cook because I have to go to work and whatever. And that's going to cut my time and me just relaxing before work. Yeah. But I've been cooking like orange chicken and rice, fried rice and stuff. Mm. And mother, um, everything. <laughs> 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 I've been cooking a lot more um, big meals though. Okay. Instead yeah. of like hamburger fries, I've been doing like, you know, a whole damn pot rolls with greens or cabbage and potato salad and rolls. I've been doing like big, almost Thanksgiving type meals. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Like I'm like a Sunday roast on any day. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I love a crock pot. I love a good crock pot. Uh-huh. I that crock stuff in that crock pot and just let it go. Yeah, that's what I got to do. This, this, uh, this is inspiring me to uh, really investigate that. I got to make some chili too. I can finally eat spicy foods again. I had an ulcer in January into February. So I couldn't eat spicy food, which is like my favorite thing in the world. It was very weird. When I had sriracha again, I thought my mouth was going to like uh, melt because, you know, your palate gets used to not whatever you're not having. And suddenly, yeah. <laughs> but um, the time in between we spoke last and now you uh, had a bunch of appearances on the Drag Race franchise. And I wanted to get your thoughts yeah. on those and how you felt about them. You know, um, I have been very thankful that they have even considered me to be a part of anything they have done that is so big. You know, honestly, um, you can't deny that they are the biggest thing that happened to the drag world. Sure. So anytime they ask me to be a part of something, uh, I pretty much want to be a part of. But I always have a good time, though, you know, because like I was telling people earlier, when they say, well, girl, you didn't win. Like, I'm sorry you didn't win. And da da da. I'm like, you're sorry I didn't win, but you're saying I didn't win. How you know I didn't win? You know? <laughs> right, and, how, and the way you feel about it. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, because when you're in drag, yeah. and you're doing drag, there's a lot of people that's all in the same line as meaning, you can say, okay, you've been to five years, you've been to six years, you've been to 20 years. Yeah. But we're all doing the same thing, and then we all stay in the same boat, and you never want to get up, you never want to stay at the job and be at the bottom. Right. Right. Why you put all that hard work to stay at the bottom? At some point, you want to advance. You want to get a raise. You want to get awards. You want to get accomplishments and all that. Yeah. So being on a show like that is not a wrong thing at all. You can't ever take that and say, you know, it was wrong. Now, however, sometimes it doesn't play outright for everyone to where it really affects them. But if you know who you are and what you've done and what you can do, it won't affect you. And I guess in in a way, uh, except for those instances where maybe people get um, a, an edit or, or or presented in a way that maybe they feel is counter to who they are, uh, mm -hmm. getting that kind of level of exposure on that kind of platform, you can't really say you lost in any way. No, no, you can't. You really can't say you lost. Um, but again, like if, if it is a, a bad cut or something, you could you didn't you never lost. It just means you got to work harder. Right. Right. Instead, you have to work harder when you know who you are and they portray you to be something else. That is more work on you. Sure. You know, right. and honestly, a lot of the black queens who've been on the show has always been one at least that they can make the angry black queen. Mm -hmm. 
And a right. lot of times, we don't be the angry black queens. We be the, the most cool. But it's easier to target us to be the angry black queens. And then that plays into the the racism in the fandom. It plays into it, but it's already been there since day one anyway. Sure. You know? Yeah. So it just intensifies with the racism and all this stuff. When I really realized that the world was, the people who watched the show and what really happened was so crazy, is Latrice was here at my house. And I think she had been on the show maybe three years at this point. She had been on the show. I think they had even already did the little slip of the, the All-Stars at this point with mm-hmm. her first go around. And we were sitting here and she was like, damn, this don't make no sense. So I'm like, girl, what's wrong? And she's like, oh, there's somebody in my message talking about guy and all this. And nigga. I'm like, wait, you get that? Like, bitch, they give it to you? Yeah, right. And so, but then I had to remember, well, of course she's going to get that. Uh-huh. Because she's like, of course she's going to get that. And look what they did to Tyra. Tyra been on the show since, what, season two? Right. And to this day, they still send her messages. Kill yourself. You're still, they do all of that still to this day. Right. That's a lot of people all got tired of me bullying somebody. And in and the point um, that, excuse me, I'm open my window. One oh, second. yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Oh, oh it's shit. okay. <laughs> they was cutting the grass. Oh, yeah, they were doing that at mine, too. And I was like, I hope this ends sometime soon, because it was like, oh, oh, yeah. you know, it gets so loud, and you're like, how long? Because, you know, when I think outside, I go, it's a narrow walkway. How long does it take for them to cut that grass? <laughs> Baby, I was trying not to drink, but I have to drink. Oh, no, go for it. No, oh, I've been doing it. So I've been drinking and vaping the whole time. <laughs> I've been trying not to light up, but I'm cute. Oh, you can light up if you want. Yeah, I'm never a, a, ashamed of lighting up and letting people see. <laughs> oh, no, that's true. Yeah, no, I like that at the beginning of the show. It's like, okay, we're getting ready. It's almost like the theme music to your show. You know what I mean? You're rolling the thing. <laughs> <laughs> But honey, yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a persistent uh, a problem, and mm-hmm. although it's it's a confusing thing, like you know, my mind goes, well, I hope it gets better in the wake of the more awareness now. But then you think, well, the people that would be writing those horrible things, they're not going to be changed by this, that, or the other thing because those are hateful things. Yeah, like, you know, what 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 is like mind blowing. We know that it's a lot of kids, you know, uh, young young folks doing it. Yeah. Uh, the old ones. We can't deny their dirty asses as well. <laughs> right. Okay. When they do certain things like that or they go on a computer and they say, or they come on our page and say, yeah, we're voting for ass face. <laughs> you know, yeah. because we believe it's rights and we this and this and that. I'm like, well, baby, listen. Do you know this is the same person you putting on my page and you trying to promote that says that it's okay to whoop a gay person ass if you're gay? Right. And it will nothing done if they bully you, whoop your ass, kill you, nothing's going to be done? Do you even that much? While you're so trying to think of a way to just go like this to a person, you don't even know what you're doing that with. Right. You're letting someone say it's okay to whoop your ass. You're young. You're gay. Yeah. You're going to go through a lot more things I'm going to go through because there was never a rule that said it's okay to whoop a gay person ass. you voting for someone or you're promoting someone who is saying it's okay to whoop your young ass. Yeah. And they don't know. It's insane also because of uh, all the advancements and uh, in the liberties that have been fought for so hard since Stonewall, et cetera. And then for people to not grasp that that's something that has to be um kept going that it has to be um you know tended to like a garden uh really right. uh right. and it's so it, that that is truly shocking and also you know when the this the inherent the, the racism in in the clubs and all that sort of thing yeah and you know like and i could just say like a lot of girls have been through a lot of things that i haven't been through yeah so I can't speak on what someone else experiences. I can speak on the experience that I have never been through, you know, because yeah. I don't know that. Oh, I don't know it. I can't tell you because I haven't been through that. Sure. But I've heard a lot of different stories about a lot of, you know, people who've been through a lot of stuff, either it's been here in LA. 
yeah. or in a area or even out of the city, uh, you know, a state somewhere. I really, I, I hope for our community that a lot of that could change because no matter what happens in life, no matter what people say, no matter what they think, when it comes down to the straight world and the gay world, yeah, we are all in one pot. Yeah. They don't care about the sex. They don't care about the size, the race. We are all in one damn pot. And if we don't come together to realize it's we're really fighting a war against someone else besides ourselves, yeah. we're going to always have this problem. Right. In fighting, when you're all in the same pot, doesn't do anything except except help the people that want to keep you down. And then they, they give them more, this is why we don't want to, because look how they act. Look what they do. They find anything to try to tie us to tear us down. Right, right. And this come on, y'all. We all we all in the same, we all in the same part together. Some most of us have went through us, you know, with our parents not accepting us. Mm-hmm, most right. of us have us, you know, our parents accepting us. Yeah. But it's like come Guys, we all still fight in the same fight, no matter where we are. It's, we're in the same boat. Especially when, you know, you see an article that I think NBC published that uh, the key to Trump's hold on the evangelicals has nothing to do with what, it, you know, it, they pretend it is, which is supposedly religion. It's racism. That's the golden ticket for them. They don't care that he is, you know, not a man of God as he tries to pretend holding the Bible upside right. down and all that shit. I mean, also, I mean, you know, really, when you look at it, like what kind of Christian, real Christian would, would see people being uh, uh, tear gassed in a peaceful protest to move so that idiot can take a photo and, and say, right. oh, yeah, no, he's a he's a man of the Lord. He's one of us. Yeah. Some things that come out of that mouth and some things that person say is so mind blowing to me. I'm just like, how do anybody <laughs> I, know. I know i know right. although good news good news apparently there's an aids vaccine according to that shithead everything he says you, you don't understand how anyone can justify it can justify it and i'm sitting back and i'm thinking you guys y'all sitting here praising someone who put the whole world in the fucking at death's door yeah he made the whole world stop he made people that voted for him lose their businesses, mm-hmm. lose their job. I'm pretty sure people voted for him, lost a family member. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Come, what are y'all doing? When people vote against their own economic interests, it speaks to this level of frustration and, and, and loathsome loserdom is what I think of it. It's like the people who just want to see, you know, like you see people say stuff like, well, the liberals are really going to choke on this one. And you're like, well, is that what it's about? You know what? It, it's, it's a mixture of everything, honestly. And yeah. I think it's a really good picture of everything because everybody's not aware. Some people's minds haven't even been developed yet to even be aware. Right. And this whole generation of life, people are not really upbeat on how life is going mm-hmm. because so many things distracting them to know what it's about. Right, right. But we was coming up, we didn't have all these extra gadgets and all these different metaphors and metaphors and all this shit to go through. <laughs> but now had this, it's like their mind is just, whoa, 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 until they don't know what life is about and what has, how to go about certain things and all of that. Right now, it's free for all because we have social media. And nothing to rely on in terms of institutions. Nothing that's yeah. not, you know, we have to rely on things that we create. There should be, you know, with guarded uh, uh, optimism, but at least some kind of belief that there is someone looking out for us in in some kind of vague way, or at least there's something that we could turn to, like whether it's the legal system or or whatever. And that just doesn't yeah. seem to be the case anymore. No, it really doesn't. It seems like people care, but they don't care about what's right. You know, sure. Or they don't care about trying to make things right or make things peaceful. They just care about whatever they can care to benefit themselves. Although it's nice to see that that's changing with the incredible amount of people protesting and marching every day. It's amazing to see. It's so amazing to see. And it's amazing to see all over the world and different races and people just out there. But one thing that always bothers me, and this is like with mainly like the black community, when it comes to like gays and transgenders, we we, we don't get that same acceptance as a straight person would, you know? 
we always got to be the ones to get knocked down because of who we are. And it's like, if y'all, when they say Black Lives Matter, well, what, what, what are we? Right, because like as he said before, it, it doesn't matter where you grew up, what your job is, et cetera. At the end of the day, you're still black, right? So therefore- right. It should work for everyone. And then some people say, well, I, you know, you go through like different uh, medias and they, they protest in it and somebody, you know, say a comment. They say, well, I'm just, I'm just fighting for my straight rights. Let them fight for themselves. Well, bitch, we're black just like you are. Yeah. So you can't, don't step us because y'all need our voices and support just as well as we need yours. Because this is a, this is a, a race thing. This is not, oh, they're, they're gay, so they over there. No, this is all of us. They can line all our asses up together because we're all one in this situation for a fact. So I, it, it just bothers me. It's it, it crazy to see how, you know, we don't get accepted into our own race because we're gay. Right. And that that's a long standing uh, problem, right? Because of the homophobia yeah. in the community. Is, yeah. is that correct? Yeah. And you know, it, that's very correct. And it's sad because a lot of gay people will be out there protesting because, and like we are, because someone like George Floyd, uh, Rihanna, all we, we will be out there screaming, hollering, walking, showing our pride, being open and honest as we possibly can into the world. Yeah. Now that's what we do. But when it comes to one of us getting hurt, killed, or attacked, they don't do that for us. They blow the carpet out like it ain't never happened. And so a lot of them, they say, okay, well, good, fine. And that's not right. right. And then the sad because it'd be a lot of our own people doing this to us. You know, a lot of our own black men killing our own black gays, our own black trans. It'd yeah. be a lot of our own killing our own selves just because we this way. And that's not right. But we will fight for a straight person right and what's right and wrong, but it's okay to wear us out. And that's not that's not right. That's not cool. Do you find it encouraging that the messages have been a little bit more uh, encouraging uh, in the last few weeks, or how do you feel about it? Well, you know, I think that now that all of this happens and we're fighting to let them know trans lives matters as well. Right. I think people are starting to say, well, you know what? They're right. They're absolutely right. Because before you're any sex, you're a race. Mm -hmm. And your, your, your race is that you're black. So all lives matter, you know, because like I told this one lady, well, if you have a son or just say your, 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 your nephew or your cousin that you don't grow up with, y'all don't have fun, y'all don't make scars on your knees together and everything, they grew up and say, you know what? I find out that I'm gay or I like, you know, the same sex or whatever. Yeah. And if they go out there and get hurt, God for being killed, how are you going to feel about that? Are you going to say, oh, my cousin? Or are you going to say, well, they was gay. I don't care. Right. You know, so like you didn't do that. And that's like with parents, they have kids and then you watch your kids as they grow up, you know, something, you know, they a little different. Or something. <laughs> right. And then grow up and say, oh, I'm this. And you realize they that. Do you want to disown them? Well, why you love them? Why they was in your belly? They was the precious thing when they was babies. But now that they grown up and said, this is who I am. You want to disown them? How do you have that heart? Where is your heart? How do you cut off the love like that? Right. How? Was it even there? I doubt it because you can't cut it off like that. Not when it's your child or your family member. Hell, not even a friend was love there. What happened to the love? Was it just there because that's what you thought you were supposed to do? And now that you got a way out of it, to say, I don't love you no more, I can leave you alone. That's that what you wanted? You know, it's just like, ugh. It just gets on my nerves. Yeah, understandably. Because where's the conscience in that? And how yeah, could someone right. justify that? And that can lead to really dark feelings about human nature in general as well mm -hmm. and also a jadedness i imagine and absolutely absolutely hmm. yeah so i'm spacing out again uh i find baby <laughs> 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 That beard is hitting, honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the nicotine. This is just the nicotine. Wow. But uh, 
brain will freeze. Honey. <laughs> well, I know it's just, it's a funny time. I find that my brain is a little foggier during this time, and it might be because it might be because of the onslaught of uh, constant, uh, very provocative information. Let's say and. The isolation in general, I'm normally not one short of words, and, but also the gravity of the situation as well, I find I sometimes just trail off and then I'm stuck. But then yeah. I, I can edit the show too, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and also time is a funny thing now. I find that judging how long time goes is a, is a strange thing during this because sometimes days feel like they whip by. Sometimes they feel like they won't stop. Honey, I wish I could say the same. Uh huh. How's it been for you? I really feel like time just be going by, and yeah. I think a lot has to do with I have such a good like friend base on my on my YouTube and on my Instagram and stuff. So when we sit there and talk and and just have a good time, yeah, time goes by so fast before I know it. It's like damn, that was three hours, but I like I had so much fun until. I don't worry about time. Oh, but let me do an hour. I just, when I, like when I go live, I just press live and whatever happens, happens. And how every time or long time we be on there, we just on there. Yeah. If they think me, I'm there with them. Yeah. And I always have a great time with it. So the time just be whipping on by before I know it. That's what I do with tapings as well. I mean, when you were here last time, it was a couple hours and we had a fabulous time. Because uh, mm -hmm. that's what I like. It's just a, a regular conversation. I don't like to think of them so much as interviews. You know, it's just a chat. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Uh, so you said you were going grocery shopping. I personally have tried to avoid that. I've been getting the uh, Instacart delivered. And um, weirdly, yesterday they delivered it to me within a half an hour, which I was like, this is great. But then I thought, wait a second, does this mean that everyone's out running amok without, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, you know what it is? They The, the stores has been like stocked. I'm sure, you know, the, the shelves been stocked. People are now aware of how to move in the store and the spacing and stuff. Yeah. And it, you go in there, you grab the stuff, and you get out. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't go over the stores first open, like first thing in the morning, and get what I got to get and get out. Yeah. But if I go midday, like like this time, or even like a little later on in the evening, it's still like an in and out situation because people pretty much got the rhythm of it now. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I'm still uh, a little thrown by the people not wearing masks as we see things spiking and everything but it's just going to take the course i guess it's going to take and i'm just going to be hold up here now did you move to another uh, place since the last time we talked well the last time we talked uh well I, 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 i've always been in this place here oh okay right right okay i've been here uh, it'll be 14 years in august i've been here but since the last time we talked i did take a slight Little move to uh, Houston last year. I thought so. I was going to ask you because I remember saying to Katya, I said, "Did you see this tweet? I, did you know Jasmine was moving?" And but then I saw you uh, posting something from here, and I was like, "Okay, I, mi I misunderstood." But please, yes, fill me in on that. Well, I moved to Houston because um, it just felt like the right time for me to try to explore something new. You know, I always wanted to move out of California, um, so it was like it was a perfect prop opportunity for me to move, and. I moved to Houston. I like Houston. It was the weather more than anything that sent me right back. <laughs> now, uh, what, what's it like? Because I know but my folks live uh, half the year in Florida, and I can't take the summer time over there. The humidity is brutal. And so same with Massachusetts. I, like, I don't miss the, the humidity there at all. So was it similar <laughs> to that? Was it humid and hot? Yes. But what I, went, what I witnessed was it was humid. And it was stormy. Oh, yeah. And no one ever told me that they happened together. They <laughs> told me, oh, you got the humidity, the heat, the dry heat, this and this, and you had the water and, and the floods and all this. But nobody said, oh, they come together. Right, right. You know, and the first time I had witnessed it, it had kind of spooked me out because being from California, and we have heat and rain like that, that's like earthquakes when it happens, yeah. you know? yeah. <laughs> 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 I had to get the hell up out of there, so I left. How long were you there for? I think I stayed there a total of at least three months. Wow. Well, that's a, you gave it the old college try, you know? Yeah, if I calculate the days of me really being there, staying there, spending the night, and I think it all went for like six months, but three of the months, um, I was up out of there. Sure.
And what was your touring schedule like before the whole crisis uh, hit? Where how, how often were you at home before you had to stay home? You know, I was I was really good. <laughs> 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 but even before this happened, my schedule was looking beautiful. I mean, I was I had dates, I had out of town gigs. You know, all the flights and stuff was paid for, rooms was done, deposits was in. It was beautiful. Everything was looking really up. I had a really great, um, a lot of good things that was happening. My podcast was going to jump off. It just like, whoa, everything went down to shit. <laughs> well, I'm excited to hear about the podcast too, because I remember we were chatting about that uh, when you were over here, and I'm happy to hear that that's in progress. Does it have a name yet? No, we don't have it. I'm still trying to think uh, if I want to, of course, I'm going to use something of mine. Sure. Um, but I, I want to be called, I'm Jasmine Masters. I have something to say or get your talk on with Jitch. I don't know what I want it to be. Um, but if we have a couple that was on a piece of paper, yeah, that one of those I was going to, I could take. So what I was going to do was right before I was going to shake a bucket with the name pick one out and then that was going to be it that's a good way to do it because sometimes it's it's yeah. just if, if the name's not immediately obvious sometimes it can get it be a nightmare of going well i don't know yeah. maybe this maybe that yeah so and then what i also came up with was out of the names that i have i was saying well maybe i could do like little segments mm-hmm. and then i can use those for in the show but use the name titles for whatever else yeah that's a great idea but it was cute i had a green screen and stuff uh-huh <laughs> 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 I gotta wait. <laughs> you know, maybe it's already one of the choices, but if if it's not, uh, I think "Time to Shine" with Jasmine Masters would be amazing. It's my time. That. Yeah, that would be. A- <laughs> I, li- I like that one. <laughs> I like that. One too. It's my time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so have you have you made so have you taped some of them? You know what? I haven't done anything because they was all in a studio. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And- and all that but i haven't taped anything though and i thought about trying to do it um just like the audio of it but i was just like well you know shit i don't know what i'm doing hooking them shit and all that <laughs> but I'm so wrapped up into knowing that they could do like backgrounds and i was going to have all this different stuff so my mind was so set on doing that sure until like i don't want to do this now i want to do like you know my background so yeah I can have different popping up and all of that so um i want to they still open to have it you know having me there to do it which is a good thing hopefully we get this shit resolved within the next whenever we can i know but if i might start doing something on spotify oh yeah cool i think i may start doing something on spotify but until then i'm just trying to wait until i get my green screen yeah 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 (laughs) yeah well, there's a lot of great options for home stuff. Like the, the camera I'm talking to you on was is really great. It's small and it just goes on the top of my computer. And I love it because I, I needed something for digital drag con. And because uh, my, my camera just wasn't quite cutting it. Or I'd have to turn the lights on so bright that, I you know, like it just wasn't, wasn't working. Uh, so it arrived just in time. I can send you the, the make and model or whatever of it. Please it's, do. Please do. Yeah, I my, would love to try to get into it. My pleasure. Yeah. Any, anything to do with that stuff, just let me know. Well, it's been delightful talking with you again. And is there anything you'd like to talk about before we uh, close this episode? Um, it's so much to talk about, but I'm just going to tell everyone, um, if you are old enough to vote, please go out there and vote. Your vote counts. We need your vote. A lot of us is raised and brought up in different beliefs and religions, but whatever your belief is, just know this is not how we're supposed to be living. Yeah. We need to live where we could be happy, enjoy birthdays, if we can enjoy birthdays, the beach, the parks, you know, the clubs, whatever it is, the happy stuff. But until we vote and make our voices heard and vote a way that can get us out of this, we're going to be stuck in this for, we don't know how long, um, but we definitely need to go vote. So please vote. I couldn't agree with that more. And also, uh, I'd like to add that we won't be in this forever, even though it can seem that way sometimes to people. And, and, mm-hmm. and we have to do things like voting, and that's on every level too, because I think sometimes people overlook uh, local elections and even this, this, the lowest level of government, because uh, things do start at the grassroots level. And uh, it's uh, time for all of us, if we're not already tuned into that sort of thing, 
to be a little mm-hmm. bit more proactive in seeing what is going on and keeping track of that stuff. Right, right, absolutely. And anytime you'd like to chat again, please let me know. It's always a delight talking with you, and I appreciate you coming on. Well, you just reach out to me, honey, and you got me. <laughs> Sounds good. I will. I will. I'll talk to you soon. I'll send you the camera and stuff. Okay, Thank babe. You. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. This episode was brought to you by Hot Dog Club. Now, to join Hot Dog Club, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash Craig and Friends, see which reward tier works right for you, and slide on into the Thunderbuns of Hot Dog Club. <laughs>